So quickly look at another very important test that is actually done in the laboratory, and this is called the pentagastrin test. All right, so for the pentagastrin test, we'll basically be looking at um, um, students in the exam are asked to write short notes on the pentagastrin test. All right, so when you're asked about short notes, it's basically hard because um, for you to know how you are going to arrange your stuff, like from the definition to the indication of the test to the procedure to the interpretation of results. If you don't know how to arrange it like this, you might end up just writing a clogged essay, which is not nice, all right? Because if you are reporting a laboratory, you are talking about a laboratory result, that's how you should go about it, okay? So let's see how in the nature of which this is arranged. We have the overview, we have the definition, we have the procedure, that's how the test is performed. Then we have, um, uh, what does the test diagnose? All right, that's basically disease conditions that you might actually be uh, doing a pentagastrin test. So lastly, we have the interpretation of result. Right, so you can see how it is basically being arranged. All right, so moving now to so that pentagastrin test is a medical test used to access gastric acid secretion. All right, so you want to actually look at the level of how um, HCl is being secreted. In the stomach, all right, and you want to actually look at conditions where you are having uh, elevated levels of all the HCLs, right? Examples of these conditions could be peptic ulcer, all right. So now, um, you want to actually access the gastric acid secretion and um, diagnose conditions related to what excessive acid production in the stomach, all right. So here's a brief overview of what pentagastrin test is, right. So first of all, what is this test? A pentagastrin test is a diagnosis test that measures the stomach's ability to produce acid in response to what the hormone, which is what pentagastrin. Now, this pentagastrin is like an artificial gastrin. You know that normally gastrin will stimulate for the secretion of HCL, all right? So now you have what? A synthetic gastrin. That's basically like an artificial gastrin. Do you understand? All right. So how is this test performed now? Uh, basically, you actually collect a baseline of the sample, okay, from the stomach, right? Because you want to actually check the acidity, how acid is being produced in the stomach. So you want to actually what? Um, collect the normal acid from the stomach before you administer what uh, the material you are using. Do you understand? So a baseline sample of the stomach acid is collected through a nasogastric or tube or endoscopy, all right? Now, pentagastrin is what administered intravenously or subcutaneously, all right? It could be through the veins or it could be just beneath your dermis. Do you understand? Then um, additional stomach acid samples are collected at regular intervals. That's after you give pentagastrin. I think we actually skipped up a point. All right, so you administer pentagastrin. Then every 15 to 60 minutes, you collect stomach samples, all right, to check out the rate at which the stomach is producing acid in response to what pentagastrin, okay? So now samples are what analyzed for acid outputs, pH levels, and gastrin levels, of course, all right? So what are the examples of medical conditions that we might actually be doing a pentagastrin test? We said that pentagastrin test helps to diagnose conditions such as what Zollinger Ellison syndrome, that's gastrinoma, um, hypergastrinemia, that's elevated gastrin levels, uh, gastro uh, gastroesophageal reflux disease, all right, that's GERD, um, peptic ulcer disease, and gastric ulcer, uh, gastric acid hypersecretion, okay? So, what is the interpretation of results? Basically, you should have two results, right? It's either yes or no, okay? So now, increased acid output and gastrin levels indicate what? Hypergastrinemia or gastrinoma, okay? So now, normal or decreased acid output and gastrin levels suggest what? Hypogastrinemia, uh, hypergastrinemia or hyperchlorhydia. That's uh, hyperchlorhydia is when you're having what? A reduced acid production in the stomach all right so now please you know that this test is rarely performed nowadays as other diagnosis modalities such as what endoscopy 
imaging studies and ambulatory acid monitoring have been widely used all right so in as much as this test is not being used is good as medical practitioners to actually know where we are coming from okay so actually appreciate the old days the good old days all right that actually gave birth to the modern days that we live in all right so that's it about what um intergastrin test I'm talking about the definition, the procedure, uh, the diagnosis, and interpretation of results. All right, so that's it. Bye for now.